So my wife and I are at the Jags game the other night, and I'm desperately trying not to think about the game because they're getting their asses kicked and they're squandering their division lead. So I start reflecting on the weird community around me. So this year I got season tickets to my favorite football team in the whole wide world. So I've been at every home game this year and I've been sitting around a lot of the same people every week. By this point, I know the other season ticket holders in my general area of the stadium, right? I know their names. I know what they do for a living. I, I know how long they've been fans, who their favorite players are, et cetera. And of course, whenever I see them, you know, we're all on the, exactly the same vibe. We're all elated at the same times. We're dejected at the same time. We shout at the opposing team's offense together. We celebrate our team's touchdowns together. We scream, refs, you suck together. And it occurs to me that in many ways, it very closely mimics the church experience for a lot of Americans, especially of the mega church variety. But here's the thing. I know that my community is fake, that it's tissue thin. I've been careful not to think too much, for example, about how despicable the politics of all these middle-aged white guys from Northern Florida almost certainly are. And because of that, I'm able to embrace them in celebration on the rare occasion that the Jags have had anything to celebrate after a home game this year. But beyond returning a high five and playing along when I pretend that we really lost because of bad officiating, I don't expect anything from them. And that's the crucial difference between the church relationship and the Jags fan relationship, right? Nobody's trying to pretend that the latter is more than it is. See, in the damn near 11 years that we've been doing this show, I've heard hundreds of stories from listeners about when they left their church and why. And it occurs to me that very often the crux of the problem is that they were mistaking a fandom for a family. They were brought together because of their mutual love of this Jesus fella. And whenever they saw each other, they were exactly in sync, right? Now that's because... You know, they were being led through a ritualistic preordained experience that they were self-selected to be enthusiastic about. But it's easy to start mistaking that for actual social resonance, especially when the experience itself keeps telling you that it is. And after years of these limited choreographed interactions, something goes wrong. There's a personal tragedy in your life. There's a scandal in church leadership. The church divides on a social issue, whatever it is, right? And suddenly the illusion of true community comes crashing down. It turns out that what they'd been mistaking for a broad swath of like-mindedness was in reality just an illusion born of everybody standing up and sitting down at the same time every Sunday. And community, like every other form of insurance, tends to be one of them things where you don't know how good it is until you try to use it. So this revelation often comes at the worst imaginable time. And when this happens to churchgoers, it's often worse than just having a community fail to come through for you. It's having the community fail. Because like, as silly as it is, you could imagine a scenario where a guy like me mistook his group of nearby season ticket holder buddies for a true community. And then he has like, you know, a family crisis and he turns to them for help only for them to be like, dude, I hardly even recognize you out of your lucky Jimmy Smith jersey. Really? You know, I'm, I'm sure that person would be very distraught. But then what they do is turn to a different community, right? If you can't get social support from them, you could go to your actual friends or your board game group or your family or whatever. Most people belong to several communities. So there's a plan B, C, and D when you're in need of a sympathetic ear. But churches do everything they can to stamp that shit out. They want to be the spider at the center of your entire social web. So when the church fails you, everything fails you. Your friends, they're all members of the church. Your board game group meets in the church basement. Even your family has divided loyalties in a lot of these instances. You didn't just mistake a church for a real community. You mistook it for the only possible community. And look, I'm not saying that true communities can't sprout out of churches. Anytime you throw together a group of people, a community is waiting to happen. You know, much in the same way that I could end up becoming lifelong friends with a guy in seat J7. But the field ain't the crop. Just because it could happen doesn't mean it will happen, and it sure the hell doesn't mean it has happened. Look, I'm not saying atheist communities are better than religious ones. I, I would say that if you asked me, mind you, but that's not what I'm saying at the moment. What I'm saying, look, look, the relationships that sprout from religious or secular communities, they have equal chances of being meaningful and supportive and all of that shit. But where secular communities are consistently and demonstrably better is their lack of pretense. I've never seen an atheist group say even that they're the only atheist group 
you'll ever need to belong to, let alone the only group you'll ever need to belong to. And I've never seen a church that was like, oh, by all means, join a couple other churches too. spread your tithes around every week. Right. Look, there's no good intention reason to want to control someone's social universe. It's one of those things where the fact that you want it is proof that you shouldn't have it. So the very fact that churches are trying to control all your social interactions, there's plenty to condemn them with. But if you need more, just look what they do with that control once they have it.